Got the whiteboard out. I have the mouse cursor as well, so if I need to use that, I can. Yeah, actually, I might as well use the mouse cursor. Ooh, actually, I really want to see something. Um, let's see, if I pause it... Oh, yes, it does come up with a mini-map. So if I wanted to, I could, like, I could technically screenshot this right here. And if I screenshot it on stream, then I could go into paint, and I could, like, write all over it. Or I could even really just look up a picture of the map and then go on paint and look at it. But I don't know, so... Alright, let's get back to it. Anyways... Let's go to, oh yeah, that's right, I timed out because my PlayStation Network servers were completely just messing up. We could have very easily probably even won this, because if we take the first round here, then I think Huntsman gets two in the first round. So, I think it went down to a 1v1. Let's see. No, 1v2, John was in it. But hold up, John right here, he was telling me about how he was like missing shots or something. Or be, like, the lag made him miss shots. But watch this. Like, you can't tell me that this is lag with the way he misses the shots. And I don't know where he was going here. It's just very unnecessary there that he actually went around there. And it just wasted time off the clock. So even if he did get this kill here, which you'll see in a second, it wouldn't even have done anything. So he sees him, misses. And hold up, I actually saw this down in a 1.1. Alright, so he's going to re-peek with a sniper. He's going to jump up. And Ooh, actually, I don't know. That was pretty close. I think he just sidestepped right at the last second, though, I guess. Uh, I can bump it up a little bit. But I know for sure he misses this one. I wasn't even there. Yeah, I think it's shot in the back. So I don't know. I mean, that shot there was questionable. He said, I missed it because of lag, but I don't think lag really had too much of a part in there on that. I don't know if it was just bullet, that the bullet didn't register because of Black Ops 3, the way the game is, or if it just didn't register because of whatever. But so there we go. He gets a kill. I get a kill. And let's see how Huntsman and Logic get picked off here this round. It backed up way too much. Alright, uh, shoot. I, dude, I can't make it so that it backs up just one. Actually, can I do, I can do this. Oh, yes, I can. Alright, so. You see a setup here? I think that's me going around here. They sent 3B. And that was a perfect counter for us. And let's see what happened to Logic here. Yeah, just a terrible peek on his on his side. So you saw here, let's back up one free or one uh thing. All right, I'll slow it down so that I can talk through it. But Huntsman goes for this peek here, and so we have this setup where we are basically peeking them one by one at this point. Which isn't what you want. You would have liked to have Logic and John pushed up more, which are the two in the back. Yeah, I'll use my mouse cursor. Which are the two in the back right here. You would have liked them to push up through here. And that way you could have more than just one here. Because, I mean, technically if they have three, they'd all have to focus on the three different people. And so it's a 3v3 standoff, really. And then go either way. But it's definitely much better than if you have three of them here. And I end up getting a kill right here. They have one middle, which probably is going to come in either through here or flank. But Huntsman is challenging one on three basically right here with me helping. But I have a sniper. So we'll say one on three and sort of two on three, even though I'm a little bit behind. But this isn't, I mean, it, I guess it was just a slow start from Logic and John. There's not really much we could have done there about that. Huntsman made a play that... It's very common. Uh, he just wasn't able to get the kill. But I think he ends up peeking a little too wide as well. 
Yeah, yeah, alright. So, this guy, oh, hold up. This guy ends up sliding just before Huntsman manages to get there. So, if, you, if we can get to this guy, right here. So, he literally slid just as Huntsman, let's see when he slides. This is really, this is such an unfortunate round. So, you'll see he's behind the rock. And Huntsman is literally just like a second, like a half second, not even a second away from peaking it. You saw it right there, it was like 0.2 seconds. So he was 0.2 seconds away from getting there, and the guy beat him by 0.2. So that's just really unfortunate on Huntsman's side. And he sees two there, he gets picked, and it's pretty easy for them to pick him there. And then I end up getting a snipe, Logic right here, he waits for the peak. Can't hit a shot. Delayed reactions on his part. I managed to hit a snipe over there. And then someone rushes me and I'm just... Right here is what you should do in this situation. I just back up. Let's see what John just got to kill. Yeah, he got that trade. So basically, we just kept peeking that guy one by one. Which is not what you want to do to get a trade. I mean, technically, if you're getting a trade, it's good. As long as you don't like play it stupid. So like when Huntsman died there, you don't want someone to... like. I don't know. I mean, I guess one by one to get a trade is how you want it, really. But So then John gets a kill. I'm up here. I just completely ran after the guy was island. I got sh tagged up by that other guy. I told John, let's run. I missed a shot there that I shouldn't have hit. And this is where the guy mid comes into play. So you'll see him here. He pushed around mid. If I can show you this. Um, he pushed around mid. And he went around this way. So now I know it's delayed on my stream because my mouse cursor is with real time and my hop on capture is delayed. So I had to delay my mic audio. So my mic audio is delayed, but my uh, computer screen isn't. So anyways, he goes this way. And that flanks me when I'm at the tank right here. And then the other guy, Island, I saw him. So we were looking for this other guy. And we had no clue where he was. We just assumed he was back there with this teammate that was Island. So, when this guy kills me in the back, he does end up shooting my body a little bit. And he goes for the body shot right there. And that's really just a good play on his part. Very heads up. And a uh, very good prediction as well. And so both of those guys are going to challenge John in a 1v2. It's not the easiest. They know where he's at. They know he's B. Shot him in the back. And that's easy round loss right there. Let's go to the second round. Alright, so right here, our B setup, you can already tell just by looking at this that it's lacking. So, you see right around here, you can see that Huntsman and John are both doubled up. So not neither of them were able to push up. Ooh, excuse my voice there. But neither of them pushed up. And what I would like to do on a B setup, we throw a smoke up here top island. And if we wanted to, we could even smoke out street right here. Because you can smoke it straight from back here. You can just throw a smoke over. And then you can either go island if you smoke street, or you can even go island hide in the smoke if you want. You can smoke both and then hide in the smokes. And smokes, that's what I'm talking about. Like Smokes are so good in S&D. You smoke off that, you can slide across here without this person being able to see you. If he gets there that point two seconds quicker, like this guy in the first round, or the second round. Like on that guy, when he slid and Huntsman was just point two seconds away. That smoke's going to block that line of sight there. So he won't be able to shoot you, and he can only he's not 100% sure if you're there or not. So if you smoke out island, and you manage to get up there, you can have a very good position on a guy island. And another thing that I like to do, is I like to come back to this tank over here, and you can jump up, and you can snipe island as well. I don't know, I don't think I end up going for it, because I'm pretty sure that's me right here, playing B, trying to watch the cross, and all that stuff. And so you have these two here. And there's a guy island they're both focusing on. And look at right here. They have this entire, so much control of B Street given up. Since they're so far back, they have easy control to B. And they could just easily push B. They, if they send all three people right, right near B building, then all I can do is really just get one and then hope for someone to be dumb enough to actually give me a two-piece and line up for me. But if they play it smart... They can send one in, and I'll kill him, and they get that trade. 
so it's really only benefiting one, and then they know where these two are already, so they're just stuck in the back here. Then we have a person A, which can sort of come mid and help out a little bit, relieve some of the stress and the pressure that's going to be on Huntsman and John here. But really, if they have one of them pushed up here, and he's got control of this whole area right here, they can't push B. And if you have one back here, one here on the rock, and then you have one here in mid, and one here A, that's a perfect default setup, which actually I'm going to write down right now. So, uh, defense default, I'm just going to write down D, E, F, D, E, I mean, I guess, D, default, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, so, uh, if you have B, rock, an AR. Uh, pardon me right now, guys. I'm just writing this stuff down. Head glitch looking island AR. Alright. And then B steps. Slash mid, I'll say. And really, I had an SMG, so... I mean, I could say SMG, but really, if I have... I mean, I'd probably be in better shape with an AR, so... I don't really know what to say about that, because if I had an AR, it could have been just as, just as good, or even better, because the sight lines that I'm playing here... You can see here that I'm playing all the way from B steps to towards like that A cross there. And that's not the easiest thing to do with an SMG, especially if someone has an AR. They can just peek out right here, and that's an easy challenge for them. And they're going to win that most of the time, unless, of course, I have a CUDA, which I have in this game. But if I have an AR, that's, in, that's a much easier sight line. I'm going to win more gunfights just being on this head glitch over here. And also, if they start sending people like Tank and on this area then I can pick them off too so I mean I guess I could look I could look mid as well or a cross I think if since we have one person a I don't really think we'd need a person watching a cross because he'd be able to see it so really no point in that uh, so I'm gonna write down looking mid and then if I wanted to get more advanced I could I can just have him sit in a corner in barn, like just kind of sit on the, uh, hold up, let me explain what I'm talking about. Let me get over to him. So like I could have him, ooh, alright, there we go. I can have him just sit right here in this corner, and then if I call out that cross, and I say one, two, however many crossed, then he could just sit here, wait a couple seconds, no one, if someone passes by, he can run out here, get the kill pre-aim barn, or he could even get that kill, and then like kind of just utilize this cover here, but I think it'd be smart if he could peek out, get that kill, then go over here and get that kill. I think that'd be easier. I didn't even know. You can go up and down just by using that? Alright. That's good to know. Alright. But anyways, if he's sitting in this corner, one, someone could run by him, or someone could challenge a gunfight, and normally he's going to win this because no one's going to run in here in barn and check this right corner. I mean, the elite people will, like the better players will, uh, most of the time, I should say. They're not always going to check it, because you don't ever really expect someone to be sitting in a corner somewhere, just waiting for people to pass by, unless it's like towards sight more. So if I call out that cross, and he does that, he heck, he could even come around here and sit in a corner here, and then... Uh, I don't think you can sit in a corner here. Eh, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could try and sit in this back right corner. I don't think anyone's really going to peek that unless they come over to the side, and I don't know if your shoulder's exposed or not. But as soon as I call that out, he can get all the kills here. And we can also shift our setup. So, like, those people B, they can both push. I can hold mid. And then that literally forces a pinch over here on A. But then the only thing we have to worry about is, is there someone in their spawn? Is there someone looking mid? Is there someone top grandmas? Is there someone anywhere over here that could get a pick on us and easily get that rotation? So that's just a little bit more advanced SMD right there. I'm also going to write down this barn. Plane.
playing a... I'm probably going to upload this video to YouTube, so... I'm going to upload this video to YouTube to help out with more players. It's sort of like a tips video. Uh, I guess, I don't know what to call this series, though. If I do upload it to YouTube, I guess like film room or film study. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, so... I got that defensive default written down. Oh, I just wrote on myself. I just wrote on myself a dry erase marker. Oh no. Uh, okay, so let's play it. And you see, like I was talking about here, Huntsman and John. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Whoopsies. Didn't mean to save a screenshot. All right. So you have Huntsman and John. Huntsman gets tagged up. I think John ends up running here. And yeah, so they literally just get complete B control. I get traded out, like I said, just like I talked about. So here, I'll fast forward a little bit. And so I get it. I wait on that guy. I managed to get a kill here, but they trade me out as I'm trying to get out. So it's a smart. It's a very good play on their part. You want to make sure you're getting trades in S and D. Something that we have, we didn't do at all in this game, really. And let's switch out. I switch over to John real quick. You see him in Huntsman peeking the same angle again. And this guy, Island, he's got so much cover to work with. And Huntsman gets picked off there by a person that pushed up because they were both in the same area. And you cannot do that. You can't double up. you got to be there for a trade, but you cannot double up so you're both in the same exact place. And I'm going to pause it again, go over to Logic. He's, I mean, there's really nothing else he can do at this point. So he's pushing up. John is on bomb. He sees both of them there. And I think we do end up winning this round. So, Logic gets one. Yeah, we do. And then uh, I think John dies here. He pushes out, which is a smart play. He doesn't see him there. But Logic manages to pick up this kill here. And, yeah, just like that, he gets the kill. And that's the round. So, ends up getting his HC as well. Uh, I don't think the HC's really ever made a difference in this SD. I don't think either of us got a kill with ours. And so, already, you see off the bat. We went A default here, which is what we do. We send 3A, and I smoke it out with a thermal sniper, and then I peek. If I see someone, I try and hit him. If I don't hit it, he normally backs up. And so that's always... It's an easy sight take, basically. And then, normally I don't smoke mid, but I probably should, just so they don't know how many crossed and whatnot. But what I normally do, I just jump out and peek that. So we're only supposed to have one watch in mid. Or flank or whatever. One watch a mid flank, everything else, and then the other three go A. So that way, when I push up with a sniper, I can peek B window, and we can have someone push out barn while Huntsman plants, which he's in the, he's got the bomb right now. And then another thing that halted our, our aggression and our push, something that kind of slowed us down, was that dart. So we had to wait for that dart to crash, and for some reason, I don't know what Logic was thinking here. Uh, I mean, I guess it, it, it's still, he survived, but if he didn't have flak, he doesn't survive there. So, that's, and then he goes over towards B. That's another, that's something I don't agree with at all. Uh, not playing at all together. He's literally by B, and as you, as you just saw, both myself, John, John was mid. I don't know why he pushed up. Let me look this back. So he was here. He was here with us, and then yeah, he he had no reason to push up mid here. He had perfect positioning. There was no reason to push up. Yep, and that was just absolutely dumb play on his part. Uh, just getting a little impatient and pushing forward rather than letting the kills come to him. He came to the kill, and then I think I end up getting pushed right here. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I get pushed. I smoke this out. Or no, this is the beginning of the round. So. John hadn't even pushed up mid yet. I missed a shot here. I have him in the corner. Uh, that shot, I probably should have hit. Slow reaction times. And then I think he, yeah, he pushed me with a weevil. Caught me throwing a nade. Just unfortunate timing there. Huntsman manages to get that trade there like he should. That's really what we needed. And like, like I said earlier about getting trades, you have to get the trade. No one is there for John because Logic was all the way over at B. So... It ends up being a 2v3, and they have numbers because we weren't there for a trade there. 
And so they easily got numbers just like that. And then Huntsman's stuck here. There's a sniper. Logic's in their spawn. Nowhere to help out. All three of them. They have one outside of A, one watching the A cross, and one on A. So they are perfectly set up for A. And what I think he should have called out. Actually, no, he's watching He's watching the pinch. So Huntsman can't go anywhere. If he tried running out, this guy is here to kill him. And so he's completely trapped because he has no help. And when I went down and John went down, it was basically, that was basically round right there. And when we didn't get the trade, or Huntsman got the trade on me, but when Logic was all the way over there, that basically gave them the round because they were able to kill myself. Or, uh, they killed myself, Huntsman got the trade. That's the only kill we got that round. And then they killed Huntsman and John with no trade whatsoever because Logic was on the other side of the map. So, that's what went wrong this round. It was just that we weren't together for that trade and they got numbers because of it. And they also got basically an easy hold on bomb. Like, I don't know if they knew Bomb was in there or not. Then they both stacked up broken. That could have been a two-piece for Logic, but really, you can't really tell what it is. I just accidentally pressed back, so it's going to be the same round again. There's going around B. Myself and John fall. Huntsman gets a trade. So it went down to a 4v2 before anything, before Huntsman even got that trade. And you can't give up numbers. You have to be getting those trades. If it's a four, if it's a 4v2, you'd rather have that be a two-piece. And just not have anyone there for a trade. Huntsman gets traded out over here on B this round. Uh, he pushed up, which is what he should do. But I, I don't, I'm trying to see where he got pushed from. Maybe it was Island. Oh, I switched off Huntsman on accident. There we go. So let's see. He pushes up. Let's see if they have someone Island. No, they, they just managed. Like, that's what you should do. Like, I said on that first offense that we had, I said that they need... With Huntsman up there all by himself challenging that, we need someone else up there. Because we lost that first round because we couldn't get that trade on Huntsman. And so when they got, like, right there, they got that trade in Huntsman, and so it was a 3v3. They kept uh, an equal advantage. And any time anytime you go from, like, a 4v4 to a 3v3, any time you lose numbers and it's still, or any time people die, or, all right, let me, I'm trying to think of a smart way to say this, but... Uh, I'm trying to think of a way to just to say it without making sense. But anytime a kill gets traded out, so like for example, if it goes from a 4v4 and then a kill gets traded out so it's 3v3, or it goes down to a 2v2, 1v1, the lower the numbers are that are alive for each team, the more it's going to favor the offense. So for example, a 1-on-1 is going to favor the offense more than a 4-on-4, because if it's a 4-on-4, you have more people on a site and so if you really wanted to, you could have four people on site, and it's pretty self-explanatory from then. It's much easier to win a one-on-one, -on -one or to uh, basically when there's only one person on one site rather than two people on each site or even four people on one site. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory there. And so the trade, I mean, really, that was a good play on their part. And then right here was their problem. I managed to get a kill and get out of there alive, and I didn't get traded. So we got the numbers here, 3-2. I think we do end up winning this round. And right there, Logic gets killed with his HC, so never mind. Someone did get a kill with an HC this game, but it wasn't me, so uh, I I knew it, I didn't. And then I saw that Bomb was down, so I was just camping Bomb at this point. I think John's going around the back, getting a pinch on Bomb here. And I think John, for his S&D game, I just think he needs to stop running around so much. If he stops running around so much, I think he'll be good. Logic's in here. He's sort of watching the same thing I am. I don't think that was smart. I think it was smart for him to do what he's doing now and just kind of watch that back. And I'm just here playing bomb. John's able to get my help there. And that's a really, that's like almost a flawless S&D round. Uh, definitely not flawless on their part because they gave up too many kills without trades. And then the HC, obviously, uh, was just a free kill. So on to the next round. Yeah, that was just, I, I pushed up, no one else did. I kind of got frustrated a little bit after that. I didn't, like, voice it with a team that no one pushed up with me. I was just really frustrated that I was by myself, no one pushed up. And also, another thing I'd like to point out, we had three ARs between John, Huntsman, and Logic. 
for a majority of the game, and that's not something very good. I mean, S&D, it's more, more viable than in uh, Respawn, but still, 3 ARs, it's kind of given up a lot of aggression in S&D, and so it's basically all just going to be making sure you can hit shots. And John over here, like I said, one-on-one, -on -one, all by himself, no one can trade that out. So they they get easy numbers advantage because I pushed up mid, I was all by myself, and they killed me. We didn't get to trade that kill out. And we had John over here, B Street, all by himself, gets killed, didn't get to trade that one out. Now, you might look at it and see, and if my if I want a gunfight or if John want a gunfight, then it it'd be a round that we won that we didn't deserve to win because we weren't playing as a team and we weren't getting those trades, which is basically the the golden rule of S&D. Huntsman dies over here, can't get a trade, and it's just the whole entire round we didn't get trades. And I think we ended, I don't know when that kill came in to make it a 1v2 or whatever, but he gets picked off trying to cross here. Easy round for them, they knew where he was. Uh, I only have three kills at this point, but I'm going to end up with ten. So I'm going to keep an eye on me real quick, see what I did. Still a lot of time left in this game, too. This video is about to take forever if I upload this to YouTube. So I pushed up mid. Huntsman dies B. No, or no, he died A? Hold up. No, yeah, he died B. Uh, it's a setup you'd like to see. Well, actually, when I wrote down that... Hold up. When I wrote down that default... I probably should write down that you smoke street and island because Huntsman, let's see what he's doing. I don't know if he was peeking or if he tried getting to the rock. Cause I don't think he, I don't think, oh yeah, his smoke missed. That's what happened. His smoke missed. And so you'll see here, he just ends up getting beat to the spot. Yep. So those people end up beating him there and his smoke just completely missed. If I can see where it went. Yeah. It got stuck right up here. It looks like maybe on a tree branch. Hold up. Let's see. Alright. So the smoke goes over. It lands right here. It didn't go over, which it normally would land right here. If you manage to hit that smoke, it'll land right here, meaning they can't see you from here. And so if you're pushed up here and you have, like, even if you have an Argus, you could be so lethal and such a thorn in the back, if you have an SMG, anything really, you can be such a thorn in the back because if you have an AR, you can peek out here or pull out your pistol, watch here. SMG, you can just play this angle right here and uh, they might expect you there. So you could also play Island unless someone jumps through the smoke. And really, it's just, it's not a good, we're not in a good situation after Huntsman gets traded out. I think I, John manages to pick up a kill here, B, and that guy there should have traded him out so really, that's another lucky break on our part. We shouldn't have won the round like we did. John glitches away. Very good play by him. It's something that... It's a very good use of glitch. He would have died if he didn't. And right now, they don't have too much control, it looks like. Uh, I think I'm jumping up island right now. I'm not sure what gun I have. I have a CUDA, so... I get to kill Island. I think we do end up winning this. We get numbers just like that because they're not in a position to trade it out. John Reed challenges Bomb. He gets picked easily. And I think... Um, yeah, I managed to get that kill. Luckily, I trade that out. The guy Rock. I think Logic comes on my help here. Yep, he comes on my help. He's chasing down the kill. And he does get it here. So One burst him just like that. And really, that's just good S&D. You got your teammates' help, get the trades, and John really didn't deserve to stay alive there like he did, and he should have gotten traded out easily there. But either way, I think we still would have won the round just because of the sole fact that I managed to get that trade on John. Actually, if John dies, we don't win the round because him dying there, or him staying alive there, oops, uh, him staying alive there got him into that second gunfight which is where I got the trade. So if he doesn't, if he isn't there for that gunfight, I'm not able to get that trade. So since I got that trade, it was just basically teamwork and help, uh, help, I guess, help S and D after that. Just basically teamwork. Uh, so logic has camo. I'm halfway. I'm almost 
half, or I'm over halfway to kinetic. Uh, John still doesn't have glitch again, obviously. Huntsman doesn't have psychosis. I think he used it at some point. Um, so he camo pushes onto A. That's when he pulled out an SMG. And then right here, this was something we discussed right after the game, this play. So Huntsman sees him right there. He's got a Weevil. Now, John, you would think he's right here. He's got to get that trade. But then he, they make a very smart play. They send three at him. They flood him completely. I managed to get one kill, and then I'm just like, all right, there's a guy B steps. Lay down, play my life. I see another guy manage to get that kill. I'm going to get traded out for sure. There's one B and mid. Uh, let's see if he gets his clutch or not. Sees that guy, gets a kill. Now, I think he does manage to win the round here. Yep, he plays his life, goes around to B. Oh, oh shoot. Back to the last round again. Lol. Alright, we gotta fast forward again. Alright. Yeah, so that two-piece right there was really what saved the round. So you'll see, he does get the kill right up here. Wins a one-on-one. -on -one. But me getting that two-piece and playing the way I did saved the round. When John and Huntsman both went down, that is something we can't let happen. If that person's pushed up all by himself, we gotta make him pay for it. We can't... I mean, a trade would be preferred over anything, over what happened, getting both of them killed. But, really, I mean... You get the kill, it's a 4v3 already, and they have to push you, and it's a 2v2 on those two gunfights there. It's a 2v2 in order for them just to even just to even get numbers back to their advantage. And so then if you get it if you even like trade out there, you still have numbers. And it's basically an easy round win either way. So we had to work a lot for this round. Uh whoops, I backed up a little bit more. Alright. But we had to work a little bit more for this round. Still managed to get it, thankfully. And then oh oh shoot, hold up. This is something I want to highlight as well. I managed to make a very good play over here at B. We sent 3B, something we've needed to do. Huntsman hit the smoke, so he was able to push up and get into a good spot. I got the guy island, and then I outplayed this person by going up top. I shot him easily. Saw there was another person back there. I looked up. I probably could have... Now, it would have been a very dumb move to re-peek that if I just jumped up again because he would have expected that. I could have gotten easily one-bursted. I saw the guy in the back rock there. I jumped up here just to see if he was here, which he wasn't. If I can go to the other team real quick, just to see where they were. They were already on the rotation at this point. And so John's over here playing B, and he sees this guy mid, and he tried playing his life. He couldn't, so really not too much he could do there. He was kind of stuck in an unfortunate situation. I'm going to go around here, and uh, I'm basically stuck in a 1v2. And I know we don't win this round, so I do end up getting a kill, but I can't clutch the 1v2. So, basically it just, I don't know where it went downhill. We had the 4v2, so we really should have won the round. The round, they basically gave us the round. I got, our Huntsman got picked. Hold up, right there is one problem. Huntsman dies up here. I think he just got over greedy. So, let's look at it. Yeah, he's playing the smoke. He's in a very good position. Now, his push... Oh, yeah, that's that's just really dumb on his part. That's something that you can't do. You can't, especially turn in his back. You cannot do that. You have to just play patient. I mean, I think... Do we see one anywhere else? Uh, maybe this guy was mid. He was top grandma. So, okay. This is something that... Very, just very dumb play. Huntsman ends up costing us the round. Or, I mean, not necessarily it's all on him here, but he does cost us a really big part of the round because it would have been a 4v2 if Huntsman doesn't make this dumb move. So as smoke clears, he runs out there. Like, we have no clue. It, they're not. We're not sure that they're A. We're not... I mean, for all we know, they could be anywhere. They could have 3B, which is what they end up doing, and they had one top grandma's looking over mid. So this is a very dumb play by Huntsman. He needs to just play patient, play that corner, play that air, play that uh, position that he just had. If he plays that, he has such a good position for the other team. If they push up, 
he gets at least one, and then they trade that out. And since I got that two, if he got one and then gets traded out, it's a 3v1, just like that. And so, the fact that Huntsman pushed up is stupid enough, and that's just absolutely stupid. But then, for him to turn his back right here, I was even shooting at this point. So for him to turn around and just turn his back to everybody, that's even more stupid. And he gets shot in the back. And he was complaining about the host. There's no host in that play. That's just dumb plays in SD. You can't do that. You can't give them free kills like that. That's just absolutely stupid. So, I mean, I might sound like I'm being really harsh on him right now if he's watching this video, but that's I'm not. I'm just I'm just very expressive. So that's just absolutely stupid. You can't do that. There I mean, that's just a really dumb play in S and D, especially because no one was there to trade him out. But that's not even what the dumb play was. The dumb play was that he had such a good position, and he just gave it up. He gave it up as if we knew they were all A already. So, I don't know. That's, that's definitely the basically what gave them the round, making it a 3v3 instead of a 4v3. And then I got another kill, making it a 3v2, which should have been a 4v2. And a 4v2 is much easier to play than a 2v2. And Logic ends up getting killed here. We'll see what happened. Uh, yeah, it looks like he just, I think he just lost a one-on-one, -on -one and I wasn't, I mean, hold up. Oh, shoot. Well, I don't get why it goes back so far. But so, we fast forward it here. See that? Alright. He's right here. Now... The one thing I don't like about what he did was his positioning. So, you'll notice here, he could have used this rock for more cover and sort of like half peaked, gave him like a shoulder peek or something. Or he could have like even head glitched this and that's a super hard shot for the Vexity to hit. And instead, he chooses to be wide out in the open. He goes for a wide peek, as that's called in CS. He peeks very wide. He exposes his entire body. I've actually just able to win the one on one as he's just in a better position because when the Vexity gets a kill, I'm pretty sure he's yeah, he's he's on the head glitch, so he's already got better cover. He's giving himself the advantage in that gunfight, he's gonna win that nine out of ten times at least. Uh possibly even ten out of ten times. So then John and I are stuck in a two v two. John's gotta come over to me because we play because that's what you gotta do in an S and D, you play together. So if you have two v two, you'd like to play together. So John and I really we couldn't we did what we could. John played it the best he could. He couldn't really do too much more. He was looking at the cross to A. He was trying to get my back in the meantime, and really just nothing he could have done there. He, I mean, he could have tried challenging, but he's gonna die either way. So that's definitely not on him. I'm gonna put the blame on Huntsman for this round, uh, and basically almost all the round, all of this rounds on Huntsman. So just that one play, you can see how much one play can hurt a game. And you see me here. I managed to get a kill. And this is something that's super unfortunate. So I have Kinetic. I slide out. I'm going to pop it right here. And so you see I have Kinetic. But he gets the headshot. So if I end up getting that kill, it's 5-4 in our favor. And then we lose this next round. So we would have taken it to round 11. Uh, but let's just see what we're wrong in this last round anyways. So let's pass forward a little bit past, the, past what would have been the kill cam. And I think I called out for an A strat. I had entry with an HC. And I looked out to see if there's anyone there. I noticed there's a person here. I tried to get down into that cover. I couldn't. He managed to shoot my HC. And right over here, I think that's the logic of center spawn right now. I think he's just waiting to call in his HC as well. Yep. He calls in his HC as well. John gets picked by a sniper. And this is something that we can't let happen either. Earlier this round, I even called out... There's most likely going to be a sniper top church. John goes for a peek. He even jump peeks him. And then you'd think after he sees him, he'd run back. But instead, he kind of waits there for a little bit and gets picked by the sniper. And that's something that you can't let happen either. Especially when your teammates have called out already. There's going to be a sniper top church. Like, I'm pretty sure I even said it, like, as a fact rather than just, like, uh, a suggestion. Like, just suggesting that he might be top church. I said it, like, there's going to be one top church with a sniper. Because they've sent him there almost every... Every one of their defenses. And so Huntsman and I, we're stuck in this situation again. I notice, alright, Huntsman's in broken. We don't want to get pinched here. We don't want to be stuck in broken. 
And Logic's using his HC. I don't think he's going to see anybody. He might see one. No, he was B. Uh, so he saw him top church. And I think, yeah, he sees him grave. Grave shoots his HC. Uh, let's go to myself. You have Huntsman still pinned and broken. Not really much he can do. He's just waiting for a waiting to see if he can catch them making a mistake and see if they push broken. I call out. Let's all rotate to B, and we try pushing here. I think this ends up being. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's one on site. Uh, I end up staying alive. Well, the time solo. Huntsman and I are not in the best situation. Two v four as Logic dies mid, and. A trade that we couldn't really get when you had the numbers the way they were, 3v4. Uh, we're not going to win a trade off at that point. But just the way things were set up, he was watching our mid. So we had a good setup. It's just kind of unfortunate that he ended up dying there and without getting a kill. And so they had one or they had two mid, one flanking, and the guy on flank managed to kill me. And just like that, uh, Huntsman claims that he gets joked here. Let me... He said he pre-fired. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did get kind of joked. I wouldn't blame internet, though. I just kind of blame, I guess, shot reg or uh, bullet reg. But just kind of that 2v4 hunts when I couldn't do anything. Uh, just basically John dying early on in that round is what really hurt us. And then I guess we just waited a little too long to rotate. Probably should have rotated a little earlier. And I should have been aware of someone on that back. I was just kind of, I knew there were a couple mid. And so I wanted to watch Huntsman's front so that he could get bombed down, or at least attempt to get bombed down. And, I mean, really, there's nothing Huntsman I could have done. We were 2v4, and it was basically 1v4 since Huntsman was forced to plant the bomb, because there's nothing he could have done. And, uh, unfortunately, I got shot in the back. If I had been watching the back and I killed that guy in the back that, was, that came from the back of sight on B Street, then Huntsman would have gotten rushed by mid, so... I would have basically had to get a three-piece, and they would have already known where I was after that, and I doubt that they would have sent two ad hunts, and they'd probably only send one, and he would have gotten the kill, and then I would have been stuck in a 1v2, and I'd have to get a 1v2 in a matter of, what, like, probably, I don't think the time's, yeah, it's not going to show the time, yeah, it's not going to show time, but basically, it was at, like, 23 here, yeah, it's not showing time. But basically, I had like 15, 10 seconds, and I would have had to clutch a 1v2 if they, if I had challenged a guy in the back and gotten the kill. And it would have been a 1v2, could have gotten the trade on bomb, and the other guy would have just known, oh, I don't have to peek until whenever, or he wouldn't even have to peek, and I'd have to chase the kill, and he could already be running around just trying to get to B Street. And really, there's just nothing we could have done. Uh, so... Yeah, I I think I'm going to upload this to YouTube if you guys don't know. If you're watching this on YouTube and you don't know, I am live right now on twitch.tv slash kkm10. I'm shutting off the stream right after this, so if you're watching this whenever it's uploaded, actually, I'm probably uploading it tomorrow, so I am most likely live when you're watching this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, stream, whatever, uh, but I'm going to end up ending it here. Hope you guys all have a great day watching on youtube like comment subscribe go to any of the links in the description as well uh hope you guys have a great day uh, also comment if you have any comment suggestions concerns questions anything and thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys all later thank you guys youtube and